Jeez. I can also roll my oh. eyes behind my head. Do you want Please that don't. too? No. 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 We're going to get demonetized. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> For shocking content. <laughs> All right, welcome to This Week in Nerd History. This is a podcast where we take a look at all the fun, dumb, nerdy stuff from the past, present, and future. I'm Mike, creative director at Dorkly and Lowbrow. Joining me, we have AJ, uh, production manager at Lowbrow, and someone who is still clicking her way through to find the Dorkly YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. And Sal, the (laughs) reigning champion of Thai food or Star Wars character. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I do feel like we're going to have to play that game again, but it, it'll take me a little bit to like find some more names, you know? Yeah. But that game is that game was so fun. One thing, too, that I missed <laughs> that I should have done was like I did it for the first dude, the, the corduroy face is like describe what the stuff was that, <laughs> that actually like the dish or the character. Anyway, live and learn. Yeah. Uh, how are you guys doing today? Super terrific. Not great. <laughs> Not great. Perfect. Talk about the exact it. Do you want me? Do you want me to be honest, or do you want me to be pleasant? <laughs> uh, honestly pleasant. Honestly pleasant. Uh, yeah. I'm I dying. will say <laughs> I'm dying. No, I'm not. Nothing's wrong. I'm just. Um, I will say for anyone out there, if you don't, if you're not sure if you want to have kids, don't do it. That's going to be my PSA for today. Mama AJ's PSA. If you're not sure, if you're on the fence about having kids, don't do it. Because it's it's hard. It's really (laughs) fucking hard. And I I have two sons. I love them so much. But man, my kids try so hard (laughs) to get me to lose my shit. And they they succeed sometimes. So I don't know. Yeah, that's got to be absolutely brutal. That's a lot. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, all right, so got a lot of fun stuff to talk about today. We're talking that about... That was all just how are we doing today. <laughs> yeah, so that was... Uh, and to be quite honest, like that's just a that's just like a polite thing on my end to just really get the conversation rolling. So next time I shouldn't. Rolling. <laughs> just give it like a thumbs up and I'll be good to just keep moving on. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, give me a halfway... Um, <laughs> No, we got to, let's see, what are we talking about today? We got, it's, uh, we'll talk about the history of the Dreamcast. We got Agatha all along came out. The Penguin came out. I think that was everything on our list, right? Yeah. Probably. That's plenty of stuff. That's plenty plenty of stuff to talk about. Uh, Oh, but the the first thing before we get to that, we are back with exclusive interviews. Yes. This week, because of her new game, Legend of Zelda, Echoes of Wisdom, we are talking to Princess Zelda. Zelda, congrats on Echoes of Wisdom. How does it feel to finally be the lead character? Excuse me? I've always been the lead. The games are all called The Legend of Zelda. That's me, Zelda. Hello? Yeah, Mike, why don't you just mansplain how to play the whole game while you're at it? It's pretty messed up, dude. No, I'm just saying, don't you usually play as Link? Uh, I play as me, Zelda. Hello? 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 Oh, right, stop saying hello. Look, I'm just saying the game looks fun. I like how you can summon echoes when you need them. Oh, I bet you like summoning stuff. <sighs> That's not what I meant. Right, Sal? All right, I'm just going to stop now. Congrats on being the lead character, Zelda. Thank you, AJ. It means a lot. All right, so this is Today in Nerd History. This So we had a bunch of new stuff kind of starting around the same time. We'll kind of talk about each one. Penguin, Agatha, and the Wild Robots coming out soon. Uh, did you guys get a chance to see Penguin? Yeah. The only thing I want to <laughs> say is about, like, the amount of prosthetics on his face. The prosthetics and stuff, like, I caught myself just staring. Like, I cannot recognize Colin Farrell in there at all. Yeah. Like, his even, like, his you know, eyes. Like, so, I couldn't even Everything see it in the eyes. Is... It's so crazy. Really? Yeah. Like, and, not, and, and even just beyond that, like I couldn't even just tell that it's prosthetics. There's a side-by-side <laughs> side of Penguin and there him, is. and it's like, oh, here's a handsome man, and here is a guy who looks okay. I don't want to be mean <laughs> about like, I yeah, I mean, they make him look beat up. Like, he's he, rough. Looks, yeah. Yeah. he looks messed up. Like He got fucked up along the yeah. way. I don't know. The, the way that they're developing his character in there or just like sort of the plot line They're that's happening him. to set it all up and stuff it's crazy like he's scheming and he's he's not respected throughout the the other like mob community and all this kind of stuff it's, i don't know it's like i was super impressed with it and like it looks cool i don't know the bar of just tv shows to me is is dropped i mean i know it's hbo and there's like a higher budget and all that kind of stuff but like 
it looks like movie quality for a TV show. It's, it's just, I don't know, I was just super impressed. I mean, HBO yeah. is always doing movie quality. Their Game of Thrones, House of the Spanos. Dragon is, right. yeah, I've yeah. never, I never got to see The Sopranos. And at this point, I feel oh, like ah, it's so much to like put into. I'm like, I just mm-hmm. got to try to stay on top of what the thing the is. So stuff. I'll jump into Penguin for sure. I loved House of the Dragon. Like, I thought it was amazing. So I'm all in on HBO shows. I've always have been a fan, even though like we didn't have, I talked about last time we were poor, we didn't have Disney Channel. We, uh, pretty, like HBO would always come back. Like we would Mm. get it for a week and then like two months later we'd get it for a week again. So I just loved HBO because it was always like just constant movies. And Mm -hmm. like, I I grew up like loving HBO more than I love Disney (laughs) for that reason. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it definitely felt the same. Like I, we had HBO growing up, which was awesome, and like you get like the movies every Saturday night, and then like when they started doing you know TV shows on the regular, they started doing like, like Band of Brothers. Like yeah. that was I, that was the first one that I remember thinking like, oh wow, this is really good. And, Deadwood like, and Boardwalk Empire. Boardwalk Empire oh, yeah. was great, uh, right. really great series. Super depressing. <laughs> my parents needed to watch Sopranos, so we got HBO eventually. My parents were like, I, I was not, I did not grow up poor, but I did grow up cheap. <laughs> and so it was like poor because my For parents sure. were both yeah. my my parents grew up poor and then they weren't Which and is, so I feel like that's how like I feel like right now I'm living my life cheap because I grew up poor. <laughs> Yeah. No, like, they were like, why are we paying for like, that? Can we have this? And I'm like, no, we can't have that. Like, we don't need yeah. that. That's right. not necessary. I, I didn't need that because I'm here now. And it's like, it's a roof. But yeah, we, uh, we, but we did get HBO because they needed to watch The Sopranos, which worked out for me because I needed to watch the Spawn cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> and I did. And it, it was awesome for a time. And uh, and I was really I was just, yeah I was like we have HBO I can finally watch Spawn. I don't uh, remember so. how long did the Spawn cartoon I don't know. last? It, 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 I think there's only like two or three seasons. Oh and, really? Oh wow. Yeah no and and even then like the seasons like changed because like showrunners switched and it, it, I think it like all people mo- re- mostly know Spawn from now is like the the DVD or back then VHS box sets of the seasons were like here's season two and I'm like. I don't remember it be actually going on television. I just remember like I remember watching season one, and then remember season two just being available, like for <laughs> home purchase. So it was a weird kind of like show and how they set it up. Also because like animation, as you know, is like barely regarded by Hollywood. So they're sure. like, oh, yeah. you know, whatever. It's that, yeah. Was it? I I I just can't even like. Was it? Presented as like prime time, like on HBO, yeah. like time slot. It was on at like I think like twelve forty five or something. It was like oh, wow. late at night yeah. after everything else. It was a it was a weird time, but I was used to that because I also watched a lot of like MTV's Oddities slash Liquid Television, yeah. where it was like, oh, I gotta watch this really cool cartoon. It's on at eleven fifty seven p.m. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Oh, we That's should do a whole thing my... about Liquid Television, man. That, Seriously. That, yeah, that was awesome. Well, my block was like, I got to watch The Max, The Head, Space Ghost, Coast to Coast, and Spawn, all in one block. <laughs> oh, my God. That's great. Yeah, HBO's cool. <laughs> yeah. I love like The you. Max. I forgot about The Head. Oh, oh man. We should do a whole thing It was on right like before that. The Max. I'd be like, yeah. all right, I guess I'll stomach The Head until I get to The Max. And As far as like the Penguin stuff goes... The first exposure I had to the Penguin was like the campy, you know, Adam West oh, version. Meredith, you know, yeah. They're just these like cartoon <laughs> characters, essentially. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Just like over the top, <laughs> goofy <laughs> and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> he might be my favorite so far is still Burgess <laughs> Meredith because he's so amazing. He's such a great actor, but also yeah. he's just like, well, I'm going to chew the scenery. How many cameras <laughs> do we have for this show? Two? Cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, he he never talks without the cigarette holder in his mouth. Yeah. So he's always talking through gritted teeth. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> he always makes sure to say things with the word P, like with the letter P in them. This pomp this, this pontificating <laughs> Okay. Purchase. You're gonna have to rewrite my dialogue to put some more P's in there. <laughs> That's exactly right. No, he understood the assignment. Like Cesar Romero's like, uh I'm gonna I'm gonna cover my mustache with makeup. I'm not shaving this thing. That's yeah. where the money is. All right, let's go on to Agatha all along. Yeah. Yes. Did you guys get a chance to watch? I did. They threw the two episodes up at I watched at once. both yeah. almost immediately. I think probably not the first night, the second night, but 
Um, mm. When it opened, I like immediately was just, I mean, I don't know how much we want to say. I don't want to do like spoilers, but I just, I loved how much, okay, I don't like, I'm trying to like c- collect my thoughts here. Catherine Hahn is so amazing. She yeah. is fantastic. Yeah. She's so good at both being like a stoic, wonderful, amazing actress while saying cheesy lines that are terrible. And it's like she's self-aware that they're terrible, but also she's pulling them off somehow. Mm -hmm. They they ride this line between cringe and amazing throughout the first episode that is so fun to watch that when you start to like, when the things start to fall away and you start to see what's happening like behind the scenes, it's just... Oh, okay. I'm like, I'm, I'm. Stop me when you need to. But I like <laughs> geeks out a little bit at the credits, uh, because they show all little bits and pieces of different like witchy memorabilia through yeah, the years, and yeah. they take all of that shit into play. Like they build on the lore of not just I feel like not just like Marvel and Agatha, but they build on the lore of witches throughout like history and also media and like where it like brings you today. Like I grew up watching the craft and loving the shit out of the craft. And so like they'll do little throws to like, you know, like you just feel like if you if you watched witchy shit and you loved it, you need to check out this fucking show. It is so fun. And Aubrey Plaza shows when Aubrey Plaza showed up, I <laughs> lo- I like almost couldn't breathe. I was like <laughs> Like, yes, if there's anyone that needs to be doing some witchy shit next to Catherine Hahn, it's Aubrey Plaza. Yes, fucking put them together. I like, I don't know how it didn't get spoiled for me that she was in it. Oh, but really? like, wow. I, because <laughs> I, I don't like, I don't go online for shit. Right, like, I right. didn't know she was in it until she showed up and I lost that's all, that's my fucking That's a pretty sweet reveal then, yeah. yeah. It was amazing. And I was just, when I was watching, I was just thinking about like, all the other th- stuff that she's in like a small part in anchorman but also Step Brothers, and she's just like insane this like insane person and she's hilarious in it so it's just like the crazy amount of like range that she's able to pull off and there's not anything where it's like where you don't bu- you don't buy it you know what i mean like she's so yeah, good yeah, at yeah. like selling yeah. it it's so good Lee, yeah. i do feel like we're in this like very special age of you can be in a TV show and it can be the pinnacle of what you want it to be like you don't like i consider Catherine Hahn to be a movie star But the fact that she is now the lead in the series means that like somebody is paying attention to what she's capable of and and has written literally written this for her because she was this character that was just jumping into a different series. And they said, she's great. She can do this range. Let's write some shit for her. Like this series was written for her, essentially, like convince me I'm wrong. Go ahead. Get in the comments. Yeah. Tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> this shit was written for her. Somebody was like, I fucking love her. She's amazing. Let's run with it. Like, let's take some stuff that is here. Let's add in some extra witchy shit. Like, the idea of let's build a fucking team. Like, we're going to do a fucking heist. <laughs> like, yeah. that's that's all episode two is. Like, we're going to build know. a team of some witchy shit. And you've got everything from, like, here's the person who doesn't want to be a part of it. Here's the one you don't think is going to show up, but she shows up. And then here's the <laughs> one who's just along for the ride and has no fucking clue what's going on. Like, I love it. They have a little bit of everything. It's so yeah. fucking fun. It's so fun. I'm just, I'm so stoked for this series. I, like, want to watch it again <laughs> immediately. <laughs> I know there's like um, for the um, I forget the character or maybe you don't know the character's name the the kid that's like helping her like her familiar I guess she refers to him as oh I think I don't think he has a name is the thing because mm. like when he says right, his name just, like, and that say, also yeah. like I like I love that we live in the age of TV where you can pause and rewind because I like oh, sure. immediately I was like I'm watching that shit again and just a little <laughs> it's like yeah. it's so well mm. done it doesn't feel over the top it just feels very like oh there's some kind of a spell where he can't say his name. Name. And I have a theory on this. Yeah, maybe there's like I'll theories. Was, that's what I was going to ask. Oh, yeah. It might be more obvious than what I'm thinking. I think probably her, like... her son is like mm. what I'm going with. That like she can't know his name because she actually does know him, but it was erased from her memory or something. But that's there's that I'm other going theory with. that it's um, what's the one of Wanda's kids like her his soul like in another. Oh, okay. Oh. Maybe. And that why, like, speed, probably wicked. Yeah, I was getting yeah. it down a rabbit hole a bit because, like, when that thing goes over his <laughs> mouth, it kind of looks like a W, like Wanda. 
Right. Oh, spell that, I thought it like, looked a little bit like a scribble, like a scroll, yeah. like some kind of a spell is what I was thinking. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the fact that he seems to know so much about her, he's really into her. Um, but he like and he has all this knowledge and he's like he says like he's able to break the link that he he's able to break the spell that Wanda put on her. But he doesn't yeah. have the power. And they talk about, you know, how you can be, I forget what the term was, but how you're basically a blood witch. You're the, the mm. child of a witch. So I'm like, I'm like, as soon as the episode's over, I turn to my husband. I'm like, he's a blood witch. And that's it. Her, <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's her son. And she don't yeah. like he was erased from her memory by someone else. And that's yeah. why I'm like, that's that's my theory. That's what I'm going with. Without having read anything on the Internet. That's what yeah, I it's, think. Yeah. That's it's tough. I don't know much about Agatha outside of like the show Uh, you know (laughs) in the comics she used to be like a very elderly woman that would appear in like random books and like that was kind of it um recently they were like oh make her hot too (laughs) i saw that i saw that recent one i was like all right that's a departure yeah so the old version hot make her hot (laughs) make her hot (laughs) so she's still like 108 but she's like oh i'm hot now i'm hot but i'm 108 you could be hot at 108 i don't really know how old she is tell me i'm wrong Tell you're me wrong. in the comments. I think you're right. Unless, right. It's, <laughs> unless it's like another 108 year old person and like that's their only like frame of reference for attractiveness. Mm-hmm. Even that though, I don't even know. Yeah. It's a hard sell, AJ. If I, I live I'm, to 108, I'm going to be hot and I'm going to be a Burning Man. I'll see you there in 68 years. <laughs> I'm going to be the hottest person at Burning Man. I'm going to be man. the hottest 108 year old at Burning Man. Damn right. That's a very. Come you're at me. This, you're making this more and more specific as it goes. <laughs> yeah, I'll be You're going to be the man. hottest 108-year-old <laughs> at Burning Man on like that Saturday, not the first Saturday, but like the second one. It in is the 68 afternoon. years from now, the second Saturday of Burning Man in 68 years. I'll be there. All right. We're talking about, thank goodness, uh, you're here from last yeah, week's Yeah, we ep- talked about f- it in the last episode. Check that yeah. out and then come back if you haven't listened to it. Yeah. Pause. Yeah. Go but, listen to that episode. Come back. Mike admitted to me that he watched like another 90 minutes. You <laughs> said 40, but you told me 90 minutes. Did I say he watched 90? like an, I think you said 90. It was like, it was like two videos that were like 40 play. each. Yeah. And I was like, we should be playing this game. Like we can put it on the channel or on the Patreon or whatever. Tell us what you think we should do with it. Yeah. yeah. Let us know in the comments. And if enough people say, yeah, I would watch that, then, you know, we'll make you pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> I also want to do things like watch movies and make fun of them, specifically bad animation movies. My first one that I want to do is the Garfield movie because I put it on for my kids last night and I was like, there are so many bad decisions happening here. Mm -hmm. There's so many bad decisions. But like I couldn't even pay attention to it because I was so distracted. So maybe it's good. Maybe there's redeeming qualities. I don't know. You'll have to know. Follow us on Patreon and uh, (laughs) maybe we'll... uh, Maybe we'll do a watch along. That's Not true. to go off on a tangent, but that's what we do a lot here. For the 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 first couple of Garfield movies with Bill Murray, I don't know if it was like a fake, like an urban myth or whatever, but how he became the voice of Garfield was that true? Yeah. Sal, you, oh my well, god! Yeah, no, no, it is. What, what are you it talking, is definitely. Are you talking about how like basically the voice for Dan Aykroyd or not Bill Murray's? Uh, Ghostbusters character, right? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> I'm going, I don't know if this is played... what you're going with. No, but, it wasn't. But, but I, I oh no, okay. This isn't so the connection I was thinking so, of. It's, oh, yeah. Okay, well then I want to know that thing because in my mind it was like, oh yeah, this is the obvious. So uh, Bill Murray, who plays uh, Peter Venkman in the Ghostbusters. After the Ghostbusters movie happened, then there was the real Ghostbusters TV series, which was a cartoon. It was called the real Ghostbusters because there was a Ghostbusters that was about something else totally different that was terrible. We'll talk about that in another podcast. I'll make sure I put it on something because I know way too much about this stuff. Um, The real Ghostbusters had uh, their characters designed so that they were kind of like throw to the the. Uh, the real go the the actual live action Ghostbusters, but they wanted them to look a little different. So Egon's hair is blonde, whatever. But the voice actor who plays Peter Venkman also did the voice for Garfield in the Garfield show. In yes. uh, like what there was like Garfield and there's Garfield and Friends. He yep. did the voice. So I assumed that then when they wanted to do the Garfield movie, they're like, well, we can't have the guy who's done Garfield because he's basically doing what we consider to be what I consider to be an impression right. of Bill Murray. So then they got Bill Murray to replace him. And when I found that, well, like when I found out that Bill Murray was going to be his voice, but 
the guy who does Garfield also does the voice of Bill Murray's character in the real Ghostbusters, I was like, that feels like such a slap in the face. Like, why not give it to the guy who does the voice? Like, because Lorenzo Music died. Because what? <laughs> because he's dead. <gasps> What? He's, he's been dead for like 20 years or more. <laughs> Lorenzo Music hasn't no! been around. No! <laughs> also, You've Lorenzo shattered. Music was You've fired. You my whole world cell. I know. Here's some you more. You have to deliver this news lightly, please. I'm no, sorry. Just keep going. The other worst it part in. is more. Lorenzo Let Music was fired off of Ghostbusters <gasps> because of Bill Murray, because he was annoyed that he was just basically doing a bad Bill Murray impression, which is not true, by the way. He's just doing a Lorenzo Music impression. <laughs> that being said, he, halfway through real Ghostbusters lifespan, was replaced by Dave Coulier, who's doing a bad Lorenzo Music impression. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. So actually, they I am went in the- so impressed, Sal, not only in your ability to know these facts, but your ability to spout off names. I like know, they no. just names, like yeah. names don't stick in my brain, but you're just yeah. like, oh, yeah, this thing that's written by. How do you have all these names in your head? <laughs> well, I don't know your name. So that is how it works. Like I, I, when I meet people, they're like, hi, I'm Steve. And I'm like, right. And then I don't remember it in any Sorry, way. Sorry, I'm full. I'm full up. I'm full up. I, I only know the names of everyone who played the real Ghostbusters. And You're Lorenzo Music. Of their lives. Like, I, need to know, I need to know how to pronounce Maurice Lamarge so that I can refer to him. Mario. Colloquially. Mario. Mario. Maria, Mary, Mario, Maria, 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 yeah, but uh, but yeah. So no. the thing I was going, this isn't even anything. Yeah, the this thing is completely I was different, though. This is how Bill Murray became different. Garfield, how which I still Murray don't even know Garfield? if is is true or not. And I, I think it is. To look I think it up you're right. But um, so Bill Murray is like notoriously difficult to get a hold of, and it's very strange that he would decide to do the voice of Garfield in the, those first Garfield first couple of Garfield movies. So the the story was that he um. The director or writer, which are, director of the Garfield movies, his last name's Cohen, and <laughs> Bill Murray thought that it was the Cohen the brothers. Cohen brothers, and he was like, "Oh, I'll so do it." So he was like, "Okay, I'll do it." And he so just he agreed, agreed to with do it. <laughs> Yep, and that's how they got him to be the voice of <laughs> fucking Garfield. You just have to trick him by having. Well, I'm going to change my name to Spielberg, so people start working with me. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. No, uh, uh, infamously, he uh, he doesn't yes, have like a I'm rap. Yes, I'm AJ Spielberg. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Spielberg? Great. I'm in. Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll be on the Dorkly podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so is Steve going to be here soon? Or... Yeah, my he's, Uncle he's almost Steve. Here. I'll just allude yeah. to my Uncle Steve. Yeah, just Uncle Steve. not my uncle. He's like, okay, yeah, oh, that's cool. Yeah, don't look it up. Don't look but, it up. Uh, All right, for those listening, uh, we're going to take a look at the trailer for The Wild Robot. I'm that looks so stupid. Right it looks so <laughs> stupid. No, I mean, beautiful. that looks awesome. I mean, that's it's, a different yeah. trailer than the one. So I looked this up last night. And, yeah, well, the original. The, I was just thinking that too. The original trailer was way like the the very first one because there's no animals talking in it. The, no, the, yeah. The, the baby duck narrative is there, but like it felt Fairly. more a lot more like an iron yeah. giant type of yes. like feel to it. The thing that I um, which love still has a about bit here, but like the first trailer is that it's universal. There's no talking. There's just yeah. sound and visual. It's beautiful, and yeah. they can literally they don't have to you know transcribe it or translate it for other yeah. languages. You can show this trailer to anyone and everyone, and they get it. They understand what's right. happening. The second trailer that has the narrative of the duckling that's being raised, of course, speaks to. Speaks to my creature heart and also Naturally. my mom heart of like, mm-hmm. yeah, you're just trying to do your best to, to have this little creature grow up in the world and do what's best for them. And it, yeah. ugh, I was bawling. <laughs> That's bawling when I watched it. <laughs> it's yeah. weird in a way that like knowing that the animals talk now, I'm like, I'm like, ah, I like it. But the it. thing is they <laughs> don't talk. I was like is the same thing. thing. I was it's like, not. Oh. 
it's not it's not that the fox can talk it's that the robot understands what the fox is saying because now it oh can there's that fox. part oh okay yeah That's cool. interesting. Like so, that. interesting so so like there's that. this thing of the robot understands what's happening because it sits and listens and and obtains all the information and is able to communicate more effectively right. which is beautiful That's in cool. its own like way that. it's really cool yeah. Yeah. even beyond just like the the story <laughs> of it and everything and but like the style of it looks awesome too. It's this painterly feel to yeah. it, like the textures that they're using and so everything. Beautiful. It's just very, yeah. it's you know, it's there. It's like a very cool thing, not a trend, but just like as these like CG movies get more and more um, sophisticated in terms of like technology and stuff behind it, like they're able to experiment more with the look the and textures, the feel of everything. The way yeah, everything is, just instead like, of it yeah. being like a hard toy surface. Story. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. I know everything kind of falls back to Spider-Verse stuff in terms of like changing styles. But like once that movie came out, like, I mean, there was stuff before that too, but like when that yeah. movie came out, they were like, oh man, now we can really have some fun with it. Cause if you look at like yes. the Ninja Turtles one, yeah, the Ninja Turtles that one oh, just yes, looks the like one where Viz the Dev level and art the, and stuff. Yeah. It's crazy. Like super, Absolutely. super fun. But this one, you know, this one feels a bit more buttoned up and, and yes. painterly and everything like that. But it's such like a cool, unique look to it that it's uh, that on its own is interesting to me. And then the story behind it and everything looks awesome. All right. This is Yesterday in Nerd History. Uh, this is the 25th anniversary of the Dreamcast. Came out in September 1999. So we just missed the cutoff of the anniversary, but who's counting? Uh, <laughs> it was originally, the big promo for it was that it was going to be released on 9999 for 199 <laughs> So it was like, it was a big deal. It was Sega. They had just come off of the whole mess of the Sega Saturn. And there was something I didn't know about the Sega Saturn, which kind of ended up dominoing some bad stuff for Dreamcast later on was that Sega pushed up the release date of the Saturn by like four months for whatever reason, I forget. But that screwed over like the retailers and some of the third party developers and stuff because like that was four months out of their time to prep for it or make certain changes or whatever. Like the retailers didn't have any sort of like a promotional strategy for it or whatever. So it pissed a lot of people off (laughs) for the Sega Saturn. You need to play test your shit. You need. Yeah. yeah. So like by the time Dreamcast came around, a lot of third party people were like, we don't want to deal with you because like we're still pissed off about what happened. So it limited them in terms of like the types of games that they could provide or things like that. Or like, you know, the promotion for it or retailers or whatever. There's a lot of like bad blood that was still kind of there. But even with all that, uh, when it released in the in the U.S., it was still like a really successful release. They made like a, almost like a hundred million dollars in the first. They pre-sold three hundred thousand units. Yeah, it's crazy. And like it, yeah. you know, technologically, it was it was very advanced. It was one hundred and twenty-eight bit for. I mean, for me at the time, I'm like, I don't even know what that is. But it, yeah, it's, it's more so cool. I completely just just yeah. blink out. <laughs> I just knew like eight bit sixteen thirty two. I'm like one twenty eight. I'm like great. That means good. So it also <laughs> it came with a, it was the first one to come with a, a modem like a 56k dial up yes. modem for like yeah. online play which i i had a dreamcast and i don't remember having any purpose for that at all so nope. i don't like to, to <laughs> nobody was playing doing a game that. with a dial up modem is insane to me i think you also needed to know another person with a dreamcast <laughs> so like, with a dial up yeah yeah yikes oh my god <laughs> Uh, one of the other things that it had was a, uh, I thought it was like a typo when I kept, I kept reading it, it was a, a GD-ROM. It was a CD, but it was like a <laughs> special thing, a GD-ROM, which I don't know okay. what, like, <laughs> I don't know what that was, but it, the, basically it, it was able to hold. Is it like those really giant oh, laser discs? No, it was like a regular <laughs> CD, but it was able it was to hold. It proprietary. Yeah, it was able to hold 500 more megabytes than like a regular CD. It was a gigabyte disc. That's why oh. they called it the GD-ROM. Oh. So... There was because a, a normal CD usually on. holds seven hundred megabytes, right? Yeah, that's yeah. I remember that but from my from gig. my CD burning days. <laughs> there you go, GD seven hundred megabytes. So it was like it's a success there. and everything <laughs> like that. Like, but behind the scenes, there was like a, just a ton of pressure around Dreamcast because they knew that the PS2 was launching like right after that, shortly after that, and also. The Nintendo, what was the GameCube was coming out like right around then, and yep. Xbox shortly after. So like, oh and God. all those things just would blow it out in terms of like the PS2 use DVDs instead of CDs, uh, which ho- also hold like four to eight times more stuff. The PS2 had broadband instead of the dial-up. Uh, PS2 could play DVDs, like all this stuff that was just you know another leap technologically than what the Dreamcast could do. So I think when they knew that was coming, so then they started to do like those any kind of promotion that they could beforehand, like it would let people 
rent it from certain like uh like video rental places like you could yeah, rent the console that is beforehand so to play. Cool. Oh, yeah. that's cool. I didn't realize that was a thing, but like you could go to Hollywood Video and rent your yeah, Dreamcast. Yeah. <laughs> which is that's like, wild. yeah, like my library still does that now. Like if you don't have a game system and you want to play a game, you can rent like a PS2 from the library. And that you makes... can you can borrow it so that you can play it. You don't have to own it. You know they're making games accessible, which is cool. Yeah. I love that. Makes libraries. a lot of sense I because I remember from my Calvin and Hobbes days, they would refer to renting a VCR from <gasps> oh, the store. No way. Like you could actually wow. rent a VCR. So and which as a kid, I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Just but own yeah. it. Don't you need that? That's right? literally because they like, were like twelve thousand dollars. If there was no cartoons <laughs> on, you have yeah. to watch your tapes over and over oh, yeah. again. Yeah, yeah. But no say. <laughs> Did any of you own a Dreamcast? Yes. No. That's awesome. Yeah, it was so um, awesome that he had it, or awesome that yeah. I didn't. Yeah. I mean, it's it's. De- I, I mean, you it. and I, you and I did not have a Dreamcast, so that was awesome. But also, it's awesome <laughs> that he got to experience. My it. husband you know, had a Dreamcast, and we oh, have oh. it now. We still have it. Oh, now oh, the awesome. thing so now you about own it. That is awesome. Dreamcast's uh, CDs were in. Uh, jewel GDs. boxes that GD sorry <laughs> they were in jewel boxes that looked a lot like DVD cases so yeah. when we got the when we got the Dreamcast to play we have one game and it's the game that was inside of it when it got put away and all the mm. other games were gone because they looked like DVDs so when Dan's parents like called stuff and got rid of stuff they got rid of all the games because they didn't know they were games <sighs> They thought they were, oh, you know, no, they man. thought they were DVDs. So there's one game, and I'm gonna play it for you now. <laughs> I have this. This is what I've had this on deck for any of you listening. The so yes. so Dan is in the oh. other room, and he's trying to get the the Dreamcast to work, but I didn't know what he was doing, and I just hear this. Hey, hey, come on over, have some fun with Crazy Taxi. <gasps> That's the immediate first thing I think of like, when I, anyone that, says Dreamcast. But, it's, like, hey! he was in the other room because he was, like, testing all the systems in, like, the two weeks before the party. I just keep hearing that playing, like, on loop. Like, hey, hey! And, like, at some point, I'm like, is he just listening to YouTubers, like, lose right. their minds? Because that's what it sounds like when my son watches the iPad. It sounds just like that. So I'm like, what the fuck? So I finally go in there. I'm like, what the fuck? Because I thought he was like losing his mind. And he's like, oh, it's this game. And I'm like, oh, I was like, this music is like, the music slaps. And it's because all the music in Crazy Taxi is from The Offspring. And I'm like, is that why I feel insane when I'm driving? And they're (laughs) like, I'm hearing The Offspring. But like, I didn't play this as a kid. But the fact that like somebody came and like played this at our party, but just hearing, I just, I feel like, did YouTubers get their, hey, hey, it's time to do this thing? Like, is that. From there, it can't be though because they're young. They're too young. For yeah, that. no, it's but that's it's, uh, very, it's radio it's, DJ voices. It's, it's yeah, just it's like wacky morning DJ stuff. Yeah, <sighs> yeah. I guess so. It just okay. it felt very much I love like crazy taxi. <laughs> yeah, yeah, me too. No, it was like the original GTA. I, you just jump yeah, in, yeah. you just hit people, and you're not supposed to, but you know, <laughs> you yeah, do, you do what I, you gotta do to get to yeah, the end point, to get to the fair, to keep the to yeah. extend your time. But it's it's I mean, it, and Crazy Taxi was basically just a freestanding arcade machine. Like it was just like because it's designed to <laughs> cost money, you know, because your time is depend is dependent on like either how yeah. much money you put in it or how much like how many fares you get, and it's just like yeah, yeah, yeah. it was originally but, uh, right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, all I could think of was just that. Every, every every time anyone says Dreamcast, I think, hey, hey, it's hey! crazy taxi. Because I, because that is that is the game. That is the like that is the Crash Bandicoot or Super Mario Brothers or Sonic of the Dreamcast. Is crazy sure. taxi? Did it come pre? Like that's what's it? Like you turn it on and it's just already. I don't on know. I, and I think it? people just couldn't resist the allure of the crazy hey! taxi. Hey, Dan. So Dan told me that when we talk about Dreamcast, that all I should do is just say that and like. See what your reaction is, but I was like, yeah, I, yeah. I, would have I was like, I have like, to like oh! hey, hey, I wanted to have the reveal that like this is what I'm hearing on oh repeat God. in the other room. Uh, yes, <laughs> that, that he's just hearing it on that you're just hearing it on yeah. repeat. Hey, 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 hey. Eventually, you're just gonna start going crazy, like, hey, Jay, hey, Jay, <laughs> what? hey, Jay. What? I'm gonna have what do you want? About it. Hey, Jay. <laughs> You go in there and Dan's just like like in the ring, like he saw the ring. He's just terrified. <laughs> just, just like spinning on repeat. Time for crazy oh my God, that's a taxi. Great ring face, jeez. Yeah, that is horrifying. <laughs> oh my God, that was great. That was awful. Don't do that ever again. <laughs> 
next time you cut to me in, a, in, in an interview. Yeah, that's it. Oh, that's my real. God. That yeah. was, geez. I can also roll my oh. eyes behind my head. Do you want Please that don't. Too? No. 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 We're going to get demonetized. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For shocking content. Wow. Whoops. Ugly. That's awesome. <laughs> Holy crap. Oh, yeah. Man. I have a stretchy face. But the, the only reason why I had a Dreamcast was because uh, my brother... Andy lived in San Francisco for a while where Sega was, and he got a job as a game tester there for a little bit. Oh, so and, cool. Um, when he eventually came back, this was, I think the timing was about right, because Dreamcast went out of business or whatever, like they stopped production on it in 2001. So it really didn't last. It was two yeah. years, didn't last long at all. <laughs> um, so the timing might have been right where I think they were just like getting rid of stuff. So when he, when he came back uh, to the East Coast, he had a bunch of stuff. I, if I'm remembering it right, I think he brought a Dreamcast with him and like a bunch of like shirts, like free swag and all this kind of stuff. And like one of the, so I played it a lot. And one of the, one of my favorite games, I've told this story before. So I may have told this to you before too. We definitely, I definitely said it on, my, on the on old podcast that me and my brother had um, mm. was uh, Shenmue was a, a game that I played a lot. And it was like, it was, it was revolutionary in a way or just very ambitious at the time for what it would do. Cause it was like an open world game and it had like quick time events. So like if you're in a fight, you know, you can like, you'd be like running or something like that. And like an enemy would come at you. And if like you hit a button in real time, like you could react to it in that way. So it was all like this new stuff. And then yeah. as I was learning more about Dreamcast, I guess Shenmue cost like $80 million to make, which is, was a, a <laughs> that's, ton that's at the time. Wow. And there were people that were just like, it, it basically, it also uh, like essentially bankrupt Dreamcast. Yeah. So it just didn't help. <laughs> but uh. Uh, but I like that game because it was like it also operated in like quote unquote real time. So which right. could be extremely boring at times. But like you were just, you were this teenager who looked like he was 35 easily. Yep. <laughs> but you're in, you're back in like your hometown or your hometown and you're investigating your the death of your dad. And so you have to like you start out at home and you have to like take a bus downtown. There's like cats to feed. There's like all this like mundane <laughs> shit during the day to to do. I want to feed the cats. Yeah, there's like <laughs> that's my so takeaway. There's all these like fun cats. little things that you could do, and I could definitely see how it could be boring. But like the real time event, like you start in the morning, time sped up by you know like eight, ten fold or whatever it is. But there's this glitch in the game that I was not aware of. This was you know early two thousands and stuff, where like people aren't posting stuff to the internet right away to for like walkthroughs or anything like that. So there's this specific part in the game where you have to get a job down at the docks, essentially, or like the okay. warehouse thing down by the docks. And you become a forklift after operator. It, this is a game. This is a fun game where you're just like, <laughs> this is a fun you, game. you have to catch a fucking bus in the morning mean, downtown to, do to the docks to work like in a, this at like GTA, like every, like you have yeah. to do mundane shit sometimes to get to the thing that you need for every, every game has shit like this in it. Yeah. So the, okay. the glitch of this though, right? So it's like real time <laughs> stuff. So it's very much like a, like a precursor to like modern GTA stuff or shortly after that in the PS2, that totally. kind of thing. So um, there's a glitch in there where you have to work at the docks for like five days. And then after five days, like something gets unlocked. Five and, like, you real have to, time days? Five real time days where you have to work <laughs> at the docks, right? And like you have so, to like, like if you're, you're playing this game a lot, you have to wait an actual week till you progress the story. You could, you could probably, you could get through that in like one game session. Like that's how okay. fast, okay. like it is like it progresses night and day and next morning and stuff like that. Okay. But five but, days. But it is like a work day kind of thing where like you have to get there at a certain time, work that day, you have a lunch break, you come, you know, like all this crazy shit. So in the in the this progress of the insane. game, though, you, you work there five days, it. and then like you're supposed to go to this certain area, and it triggers a cutscene, and that cutscene then allows you to progress farther past the the part where you're no longer a forklift operator. Like you get a <laughs> ticket on a boat, and then you go to like some other part in the game. Mm -hmm. yeah. But the way the game was designed was that that spot to trigger that cutscene wasn't obvious. Like you could easily it's set miss up it. where you there is an option to miss it, like oh, no. easily. So if you if you're not aware of it, you just miss it and you're just working at the dock every fucking day. <laughs> so and me just being like an idiot and just like I'm like, well, this is I'm just like I'm trying every combination of stuff. I worked at that dock, no joke, for like six fucking months, like in game time. <laughs> like I'm there forever. Like I'm stressed out like more about this job than like my actual job. And like, I have to like, I'm like, I have to and then, like, check do you in. I have to do feed you end this up, guy like, damn talking cat. To I have to like, who's like, you need to go to this spot. Did you like, so did you talk I, I to just didn't figure it out? Well, no, <laughs> or you just stopped like, playing. 
no, I kept playing. And like, I tried every possible combination. There's all this stupid shit in this. So like every morning you could go <laughs> and it was just kind of set up as like a learn, like a, like a mini game in the game to like learn how to operate the forklift. So like every morning you would get there, you would fucking take the bus, go to work and then like race one of the other dock workers in, in the forklift. And it was just a method of like learning how it operates. But at the end of it, you get this little like toy, useless, essentially useless little icon thing of a forklift toy forklift and it comes in like different <laughs> colors so there was a good like three weeks in the game where i'm like all right i think i have to get every color forklift thing and like win the thing every morning <laughs> oh that didn't my work God. and then i'm like i'm trying every there's like a certain warehouse that you have to go to for lunch i'm like maybe i eat the eat lunch in warehouse seven instead of three or whatever <laughs> like all this stupid shit it goes on forever and yeah. then finally i'm like and again like this isn't my first thought isn't to just google it like this was sort right. of pre all that shit so then i'm finally like online and i'm just look, looking for it and it was called like i might have been wrong about this but it, it was either like the groundhog's day glitch or i think it's just a, a, essentially just the forklift glitch was, was what it was called <laughs> yeah so, day you got so stuck then, I, on groundhog day i so i do it and i finally get past it and i'm able to get on the boat to like the next whatever part of it and i'm so disinterested in the game at this point <laughs> and it's like a big revealing part and it, the game just got crazy at that point too where i didn't even finish the game at that point you're like yeah. i've just like, I've just lived I'm, an I'm entire happy in my little lifetime. life down at the dock. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I've lived an entire lifetime at the good dock, benefits. and I want to stay there. I made there. good friends there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I had every. I had a collection of uh, little thing. forklift I toys. I feel like that's how, like, literally the way that you played that game is how people get, like, stuck in their hometowns and never leave. They're, like, it's, literally, it's exactly like, that. It's exactly I that. found, I'm okay here. I don't need the adventure. I can yeah. just stay. I got the thing that I, I wanted. I got my cats that I feed on the way yeah, home every night. I feed night, the cats. You know? I take Exactly. The bus, it's yeah. fine. I'm up for that promotion. And like, no, no, <laughs> no hate for people who you know stay in the town that they grew up in. That can be very lovely for a lot of people. It just wasn't yeah. for me. I was like, out immediately. <laughs> right? There You're ain't nothing for me here. There's not enough cats, so I gotta stuff. go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it, so I, I just couldn't believe how long it took me. Like, if it happened now. Oh, the, fir yeah, the, like, the first like or second time I missed that thing, like, I'm like, I'm just going to Google it. I'll just be on my phone in two seconds and figure it out. <laughs> but yeah. like at the time, I'm like, I, I'm stuck here. This is my life in this game. Yeah. And Googling then, Googling what to do next for a game is so ubiquitous in our house that like if the kids are watching myself or my husband play a game and we can't figure something out like quick enough for their entertainment they'll be like should you just google it do you want me to look on youtube like my son has even done the thing of saying like i'll get dad's phone and look on youtube and we'll, i'll be like no like i'm got like i'm doing the thing i'm figuring it out like leave yeah. Me alone. Just, yeah this isn't for you this is for me <laughs> exactly <laughs> when i get frustrated we'll look it up I don't like, yeah, but it's exhausting bored. watching you do this. <laughs> I'm like, you don't have any ideas. <laughs> yeah, I'm not hearing any. I'm not hearing any bright ideas from the peanut gallery. <laughs> I have horrible news for Mike. What's that? The boat is the last level of the game. <laughs> <That was... laughs> so you gave up right before the end because like, you're listen, like, I just. Like That's Ryo so arranges to take a boat to Hong Kong on the day of their departure. They're attacked by by Chai. Uh, Ryo defeats him, but Guizhong is injured and urges Ryo to go without him. The That's game is over. <laughs> you quit right before the end of the game? You quit right before the end of the game! <laughs> and you didn't even oh know. God. Now you know. How did, how did I somehow manage to waste more time now? Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> My God. <laughs> All right, well, that's it for uh, us this week. Thanks so much again for watching and for listening. Uh, check out our Patreon. Uh, we've got ad-free stuff, ad-free early, early release videos of these things. I'm getting better at this, not at all. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we got like merch discounts and behind-the-scenes stuff and Patreon exclusives, all this kind of cool stuff. So definitely check that out. It supports us and helps us a ton. Sal, you got anything you want to plug? If you uh, are at comic book stores, go swing by one on the 9th of October and pick up uh, an issue of Terminator from Dynamite because I wrote the backup to it. And uh, so, yeah, make them yes. make them sell out. Make them go to another printing. Got a bunch of pre-orders, so I'm hoping that was I'm hoping that was our listeners. If I that was, was you, thank you. Absolutely, seriously. 
you're you're keeping Sal in a job. Yeah. And also, yeah. I can't. When I'm you, so excited for that. When you talk I mean, about how you gave them you, like a six season arc, and then they you were hoping they yeah, said like, they were like how about get two as more Moxie? pages? Like that lives rent free in my head of like Thank just you. Being <laughs> yeah, all my references are from the turn of the century. <laughs> AJ, what do you want to plug? I would like to plug registering to vote. If you are turning 18 before Election Day, you can register to vote now. You don't have to be 18 to register. You just have to be 18 to vote. So go to vote.org. If you need any information, you can get everything you need. You can learn about programs, voting by mail, registering to vote, all that stuff. The election's coming up. If you live in the U.S., it's very important that your voice is heard and uh, that you get a say in our election. Please do that. Thank you. I love you. Bye. It's super important. We don't care if you vote for Kang or Kodos, either one. <laughs> you can vote for either one. Uh, Voting is important. Because it's important to go forward, not backwards. Upwards, <laughs> not forwards. And always twirling. Twirling. Twirling, twirling towards <laughs> freedom. <laughs> What is that? That's a oh, that's man. a forty five year old episode of The Simpsons. <laughs> yeah, the two the two aliens that always show up in The Simpsons. They is it was a uh, Treehouse of Horrors um, episode or I'm short. Surprised yeah. It was for the election. Immediately... It was for the Dole Clinton election. Dole Clinton. Oh my god! We, and Homer uh, accidentally jettisoned so them fun. both into outer yeah. space. The surprised election episodes are always they're always so dated, but they're always so funny. If <laughs> it, and I have to plug this. There's an election episode of The Critic, and it is unbelievably funny and so <laughs> hopelessly dated but it's so worth checking out <laughs> i will check it out if you want to follow us on apple Podcasts, follow us on spotify wherever you get your podcasts give us a listen give us a rate like tap a little star whatever the thumbs up i don't know how all the things work i don't do all the things yeah, yeah we like some, doing it i saw We're some ratings and fun. comments on the on apple's podcast stuff so thanks so much for doing that guys yeah. keep it up oh, please nice. it, it it does definitely help I think, didn't you say either, we were but... like we we're number 27 in australia no or no, no new zealand was, <laughs> I would say, yeah i got a random email so new zealand i don't know what the rankings are now but we were like 74 in, in new, new zealand, zealand for like comedy podcast Thank this was after the first zealand. episode all so right. Shout out so, to New Zealand know, for now. Watching, hopefully, yeah. for our listening. numbers have gone up because of the Lord <laughs> yeah. of the Rings episode. I know hopefully. we were talking about we, talk, we did Rock a whole Rock. episode about Lord of the Rings. Not because of that, we had already had it planned before exactly. we knew about. Exactly. We we're just like so hyped because we're like they know they know it's coming, right? Yeah, yeah. they had. To know. What were we talking about? Are we on a podcast? We're finishing. We're done. Shit. Yeah. Right, yeah. What do you want to plug? <laughs> plug we should have I want to plug. What do you want to plug, Mike? Patreon. Oh, you know what I want to plug. These I just started. I just picked these up. I just started reading them. Um, it's uh, boss fight books. Oh, cool! It's these. There's a bunch of them. It's all just like the backstories and history and stuff about certain games. So this one is Resident Evil. I haven't read this one yet, but I got uh, Super Mario Two at home that I just started reading. They're just super cool and uh, just interesting. And there's like a ton of there's a ton of them, and you can buy like a whole big box of them or whatever. But if you go to boss fight books. I think it's boss fight, bossfightbooks.com. So you're um, going to be giving us like full review, like rundowns once you've Yeah, run. I'll do a whole history thing, but there's like a ton of, I think there's like a Metroid one. I don't know. There's a ton that I wanted to get, but I love Resident Evil and I think Super Mario 2 is such a, a weird game. Uh, so I'm just interested about that whole history about it. Um, yeah. But yeah, there, there's no sponsor thing or whatever, but uh, <laughs> I, I think it was like super them. interesting. This is awesome. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to buy two right now. <laughs> <laughs> If uh, you notice an influx of uh, purchasing from our podcast, and you, uh, if you're one of those people that pays for, you know, words to be found, and you find us, and you know we're talking about you, and you like us, give us money. <laughs> <laughs> money, please. money, please, money, please. Oh my god! All right, we like you, and we hope you like us. Well, hey, how about this? Ernie Hudson auditioned for the role of Winston in the cartoon and lost it to Arsenio what? Hall. <laughs> what is happening? Fuck. That's so messed up. They were like, we don't really He's... see you as a Winston type. He's like, but He's I am like, Winston. I'm literally I'm, Winston. I am Winston.